everybody came and left by train. Train station? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I played in those luggage carts a lot. I remember um, telegraph office there. And um, that used to sort of run all the time. People, I spoke to somebody the other day who was the assistant telegraph, telegram deliverer. Uh, I got so many pennies uh, each telegraph, uh, telegram that was delivered. They used to go right on the wharf and uh, yeah. take sar pick sardines up. There were two CPR wharves, oh, yeah. and they used to store the fish sardines in there, and they go down there and yeah. put them in the box. Yeah, cars. Just put your ticket. Um, yeah. yeah, it was just the end you went down, because yeah. we used to win it sometimes. It's for a ride, they'd take us down. They got the water, and then brought us back up. <laughs> and they'd have beards, and they'd be all icicles hanging from the beards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but they always went down the round. There was a big thing down there and put the water in the, in the engine part here. This lady was quite the princess, wasn't she? She right. certainly has the outfit. That's all there at the station with the hats there. Yeah. Oh, We moved to McAdam in 1942. I used to get on that train every morning in McAdam and come down here every Saturday morning. Come down here, visit my grandmother, and go down and jump the train back to McAdam. <laughs> so, so, uh, so that train used to run back, but now it looks like it had a few more cars on it there. Hockey was so big when I was in high school, they used to have it take a train load and go to St. John to the hockey games. Really? Yeah. yeah. How long did that take on? Oh, I have no idea. We had so much fun. Who cared? <laughs> <laughs> I used to get on the train here at 5 o'clock and go up to Limeburner Lake and get off there. And we had a small camp there and I'd go into camp. That's how it, that was transportation then. Yeah. Did they charge you? No. No, they were good in those days. Well, Mr. Talbot, I think, was the yeah. conductor. Yeah. And when you're real young, your parents told you don't stand too close to the tracks because it'll suck you right in. <laughs> 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 Way back in the 30s, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, no, it had to be in the 40s. That when it snowed, all the men in town would be hired on, go down there and shovel the, shovel the platform yeah, and the platform. Getting that all out. They used to like that. That was... Before unemployment and all that, there was no money in the winter time, eh? Mm -hmm. He's posing. <laughs> yeah. There is a flag. There are oh, two of them. A yeah. flag on both sides. Who was it got drunk and, and forgot to get off? He was locked in the bathroom. You had Sharky? <laughs> I could have been. Woke up the next morning, he was back in Macadam. <laughs> We went so to, just to torment them, we went to the, half the people that had been on the train the night before went down to the train just to really yeah. embarrass them when they came in. <laughs> and this looks like a special train of some sort. David and I were both downtowners, so we remember. Yeah, there were the downtowners down, and there down, were the downtowners. uptowners. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everything above King Street was the uptowners. And, and I was King so Street thankful I wasn't an uptowner. <laughs> it got so vicious there were kids at times that would walk the beach. To get home. Yes. Know, quite a few people Oops, turned out. And it looked like there was a colored gentleman walking up the track. Up there with the coveralls. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. And he is colored, I think. Yes. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Good stuff. But I never saw him with anything like that on. He doesn't look like a porter or anything. No, no. he doesn't. Porter was always dressed up eh, with the yeah. uniform and the hat. Yeah. Yeah, the I think I could tell you, I think I got it written down when Caddy died. And it's also a plaque up here in the uh, Anglican Church. Flag on the car there. Lord Baden Powell came here. I think the pictures I have of people at the train station. George Horn Russell. Oh, there's Annie Carm. Annie Carm and Annie Mary. Carm's, Carm's mother no, and no. Carm's aunt, or our aunt. And they weren't getting in the limo, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but look at the flags on the car. Yeah. Okay, this is a... So maybe there's... Royal visit or something. Maybe they look as if they're waiting for something. 
when I was in high school, we used to meet it in June. Every noon hour, look the girls over. <laughs> Well, as I say, we had, um, like Lord Shaughnessy lived here, Lady Shaughnessy, uh, I don't know if they put the flags on for them when they came down from Montreal for the summer. Oh. There's our constable. I'm thinking it was late 30s, and we had constables up till then. The first RCMP officers to come to New Brunswick was around 33 or 34, and they came to Fredericton. Our well, there's, sure. That's our father that's holding John O'Neill. That's, a, that's John. It's here in St. Andrews. No, Jim O'Neill is holding the baby. Jim O'Neill. Oh, okay. It's all about so Mary. <laughs> yeah, she's about one year old there, wasn't she? Oh, that's Grandpa. With Mary Elizabeth. Yeah. The uh, St. Croix Courier used to, used to summer directory, and they'd list all the people who would come and gone with their families uh, for mm -hmm. Saint, in St. Andrews, who'd come by a private rail car, who stayed in the private cottages, the Algonquin and private cottages. That's our grandmother. Um, that's that's Fran uh, Alicia O'Neill. Yeah, Alicia Francis, our grandmother. So they would they put a plaque on the, on the, on the door, so if the Redmond family came for three weeks, the Redmond plaque would go on the door, and then if the Shaughnessy's came, the Shaughnessy plaque would go on the door. And one of those families used to send their ponies down by freight car. I remember my grandfather going downtown to St. Stephen to, to buy a newspaper most every day, walking downtown, down the hill. And he always was dressed to the nines just to go downtown. That's, that was normal, I guess. Uh, that looks like Grandpa there with the hat. Yeah, and, gra and my grandmother with the white hat. There's this lady. She appears several times. Mar Mary O'Neill Thompson oh, right there. Elizabeth and Mary Elizabeth O'Hagan. Shield. And Carmelita O'Neill O'Hagan. Mother, daughter on right. the other side. That's Those it. are two, two, sisters, two, sisters. two sisters. And the daughter of the one on the right. 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 Goodbye trains. I oh, I hated them. I, well, I just oh, I didn't like to, to say, say goodbye, goodbye, but I loved the train. Well, that would that where the private cars were put. Private ones. Yeah, and that means the hotel still open, because they'd come down, put their private car there, spend a week or two at the hotel, and then leave by private rail car. You taken the train lately? I was on it a couple of years ago. We came from Macadam to St. Stephen. Oh yeah, no, I never. It's went fun. Yeah. Yeah. Freight car to follow us inside. I went from here to Macadam on down one of those little motor cars they had on there. Those open cars you sat on, you know, not the ones with the pull or push, mm -hmm. but had a little motor on it. Mm -hmm. Dad had to get back to work, so he went up on it early in the morning. So I clocked him and let me go too. So I could little there, there's the hockey team. Yeah, yeah. back to school. Isn't that Tommy Magneto? That's Tommy, all right. Yeah, no doubt of that one. Anyway, so we, uh, it was cold. My God, it was cold. I still remember. It. His yeah. real name was Donald. Donald. Yeah, and his twin sister was Donna. They were twins. <laughs> Yeah. Or the conductor. Well, there was always somebody at the station uh, when the trains were coming and going, so I assume it would be uh, a freight and a caboose. It's a small train. But of course, it's winter time. That's it was 42 miles on that railway track to McAdams. Was it? Yeah, it was 28 miles to White Junction and 14 miles. You know that uh, that 42 miles used to take two hours, but we used to spend a lot of time waiting in Watt Junction for the St. Stephen train to get out of the station so we could go in this place. Yeah. Old Gloucester, that's up in Bathurst. Yeah. That's Tommy McNichol right there. Gloucester was the hotel in Bathurst. Bathurst, yeah. yeah. So that's your hockey team there. St. Andrew Senators. After the war, probably in 46, they started playing and they used to, they played in the New Brunswick Hockey League, and actually the Senators won the New Brunswick title a couple of years there. Pickle and Nickel was the big person behind that. He had, he had gone away as a young man to play junior hockey in Ontario. And I can still remember, it was a two-game total goal series. And Bathurst came to town here, 
and won the first game down here by quite a handy score. So really going back to Bathurst, it was impossible for the Senators to go up there and win. And Pickle McNichol, who was a fantastic hockey player, said to the team, he told me at the time, see, uh, there's Pickle right there. That's my Uncle Jim right there. That's Huey's father. Uh, he said uh, to the other lines, you just keep them from scoring and we'll score all the goals we need. And they beat Bath or something like, I'm just taking it out of my head, 10 to 1 or something. That's Bill O'Neill right That's in the middle. In the middle. With the pipe, we don't know. The pipe is pie. Uncle Pie is H P H P. There's the doctor, isn't it? Right there with the pipe. Okay. That's A B. There's John beside. John O'Neill. That's John O'Neill on the left. Yeah. Bill O'Neill. Yeah. Yeah, that's him with the gold of the hat. Yeah. 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 I'm guessing it's a funeral, but I have no idea. They're very yes, very solemn. That's Aunt Alice with the purple dress. That looks like that. That little girl looks like him. Helen O'Neill. She was the daughter of Dr. Second cousin. So, and how old is she there? Five, so let's say it's 1940. 39 or 40. You think that was a steam engine, Nancy? Now that looks more like the size of a train. That's the answer right there. Yeah. In the caboose, that's a special caboose because that's the ones that the uh, workers would actually work out of. They would be a stove in there, they could sleep in there. Well, down at the station, there's a train ready to, ready to go to McAdam in Montreal. Who are they saying goodbye to? Who's getting off? Here comes the, the train out to Cham Cook. There's Lee's house, Lee's camp. That's leaving town. That's probably the five o'clock train. We used to be up at the farmhouse on Sunday nights as children all got together, brought the food and the water, drink and water and whatever, and we'd watch the train leaving from the station. You know, you'd hear it blow the whistle, you'd hear though. hear the whistle and everybody would be looking down because the tracks ran across through the property. Sometimes we'd get to ride out on the train from the station to the farm, and then they'd let us off at the farm if you'd get out. Yep. We got out, they went farther too, though, one other, other place. Might have been the bar road. We'd go to the bar, the bar road. road. Yeah. They'd stop and let us off. 